<clears throat> My Hebrew is like brothers and sisters, the 12 tribes of Israel scattered all over the earth. Let me take this moment to say Shabbat Shalom has gone and now we are in another week. Almost Shabbat Shalom again. <laughs> Amen. And my brother, my sisters, you know, um, so we want to say to you, you, this is your Murray, Dr. Yeshu, and thank you so much. Thank you so much for your viewing. Thank you for your likes, your comments. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for everything. We're sorry that um, this session should have been done the last two days, and we have not been able to do it. So we just come together, and right now we're going to do it now. Amen. <laughs> Praise his name. Hallelujah. And my brothers and my sisters, for those of you praying for us here in Florida, I understand the hurricane is here. I can see a Helene, Helene, something like Anyway, is it, we know it, it touched down over on the west coast of Florida, and about three hours ago, from the time before we start um, doing this tape, um, <coughs> excuse me. Oh wow! It was um, in Tallahassee area, um, which was about 150 miles from Jacksonville. We don't know. I haven't heard the last. Um, report on that because I'm not looking at the weather. So, <coughs> excuse me. Wow, mm, I'm not looking at the weather channel. So please forgive me. Please excuse me for sneezing and my sinus been bothering me, especially with, you know it's stop. It's windy outside, so um, and it, it is raining on and off, on and off. If you see something go wrong, then you know we can't go any further. We don't know if we're gonna lose power or anything like that. Um, I haven't heard anybody talk about losing power here in Jacksonville yet, but um, we just want to let you know, my brothers and sisters, that we appreciate you, we love you, and thank you. We, you know, we're in Psalm 44, and um, the last session that we did was um, in verse 11, okay? And we're talking about prayer for protection, prayer for our protection and my brothers and my sisters when when I read this passage and um, you know Psalm 44 and you know the last few verses when I read that again just sit down and think about our plight you know who we are and what Yahuwah has done for us in bringing us to this point. As long as we walk in his footsteps, my brother and my sister, and this is what I am really trying to be profound on sharing that the mistakes that our ancestors made that brought us to this point. We don't want to make those mistakes again. Some of us continue to make those mistakes. The, the people who have been unawakened, they continue to make those mistakes. My brothers and my sisters, if you remember in the history, history of our people, you remember how they used to run after the other countries, the heathen, like what the heathen did, it, it was seemed like it was more exciting about the things that the heathen people did. And because they were not doing those things, and many of them did not have the experience in doing those things, they want to go over and they want to join up with them. They want to investigate the claim that they were doing. And as soon as they get over there and start investigating, my brothers and my sisters, you know what they did? They start joining them. And before long, they were all mixed up with all kind of beliefs, have all kind of gods, having their children walking through fire, sacrificing their own children for naught. 
my brothers and sisters, today, the unawakened Hebrew Israelite people are still doing it. When you look at some of the politicians, as derogatory as these people are, the way they sound, they let you know up front. It's not something they're holding secret. They're letting you know that this is what I stand for. This is what I believe. And here we are as a people called by Yahuwah's name set apart for his glory and we're running behind them running behind the heathen people the Gentiles doing what they do eating what they eat our whole mannerism everything about us we, we, like we change our Hebrew is like culture my brothers and my sisters and we're following them following behind them eating the swines eating the shrimps eating the crabs eating the lobsters and all of those things because you know what they fix it to make it sweet for you and you get caught in doing it and once you get caught in doing it my brothers and my sisters never stop never being able to stop you're going to take a lot to pull you away from that it takes the power of your whole to pull you away and many people are not yielding to those powers you know what your is not going to fight you to change he's offering you freedom he's offering us peace tranquility he's offering us abundant life and is offering us eternal life. It is for us to choose. And the question is, are you going to choose? When are you going to choose? And who are you going to choose? Yes, my brothers and my sisters. So, I get one of those things um, that comes, the thing that comes to my phone. And I subscribe to it because it sends a lot of pictures about, um, you know, different aspects of Hebrew Israelite life. Talks about our first people. Talk about even the, the first people here in the United States, and show that the people who they call Native American, most of them are the first Native Americans were not really the brown skin looking people that you know, mixed with the European, you know, and all that. They were people like us, people of color. But you know something? Today, and today is what, the 26th? Today, the 26th of August, there was something that I saw. And I don't know if Sister April in, uh, in, and, brother, and Brother Avon, they're in Baltimore, and uh, Sister April is one of the um, administrators for the Shabbat, um, you know, live stream and, and so And I don't know if they'll ever get a chance and if they will ever be able to get a chance to go I know it's, it's a Catholic church. There's a Catholic church here in um, in Baltimore. And they have what they refer to as Stations of the Cross. There's one of those churches in St. Louis. And I, I, I visited when I was in St. Louis um, area. I was in Warrington, Missouri a couple of years back. Just before the Iran crisis when they captured the American as hostages uh, I think it was right around 1978-79 and I had an opportunity I was helping a pastor in uh, Wright City Missouri this is outside of War Warrington and it's about 40 miles west of St. Louis and um, he was very very you know 
He was a he was a United Methodist pastor. He was a Baptist pastor who be, became a pastor for United Methodist Church. They knew that he was a Baptist, but they invited him and asked him to take the church. And so we were students at the Child Evangelism Institute. So we went there to, you know, help him in his church, in evangelism and doing a lot of Sunday school teaching and different things. And, you know, so so it, it took a couple of us over to the St. Louis. Um, they call it across the bridge. It's, it's, it's um, a, and that section is called East St. Louis, which is over in the, like the Illinois side. And um, so, so um, he did what he, he should, what, took us to the monastery. There's a monastery there where people come from all in California to come and pay penance and so on. But they have what they call the Station of the Cross, where you, every, at every event where Yahushua Yah was crucified, when he was crucified and so on. But that one show Yahuwah, um, sending Yahushua, showing Yahushua as a white man. But this church in Baltimore, this Catholic church in Baltimore, based on what, based on what um, I'm looking at, I'm going to ask Sister, uh, Sister April and Brother Avon to check it out. Because they have the Jesus that they're talking about is not white, it's black. And all of the people around him, you know, they show the, the, the people who were the Israelite people, he showed them as black too. And it, it is awesome to look at it, you know. And one of these days I'm gonna take those pictures and I'm gonna I'm gonna share them. I'm gonna show you, the, you know what I'm talking about here. But you know when I think about what I'm saying here now and when I look at those you know pictures of what they were showing they are they are not just pictures they are, they they took them from the the images that they made they, you know they they have sculpture like they're done in in brass and so but they're black black and the black features and everything you know and um it's kind of awesome you know and that was like a 15 in the 15 1400 the, those things were done. So in the 1400, they believed that Yehoshua was was black. And, you know, I, I probably, in the 1200 on, you know, prior to the 1200, he was black. Now he's white, you know. <laughs> and um, the, 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 it's kind of funny because why would you want to have, you know, a white God, right? And then you have a white slave master and slave owner. And everything in white, but you black. <laughs> and they're telling you that you're condemned, that you're no good, that you're worthless, that you're eating pigs. I mean, not pigs. There were gosh, there some people eating pigs. That pigs is bad, but to say black, because black people generally don't eat those kind of stuff, you know? Yeah, the, it's a lot of Asian people eat cats and dogs. A lot of Asian people from Asia, okay, but they don't just catch them off the street and eat them. They take them and put them up and clean them up, make them clean and then they eat them, you know. But they say that you know our people are in Illinois. I, I, I know not Illinois, but in um in, in Ohio, like Springfield, Ohio, some place over there. Say so we have some people, our, our people eating the people's pet, putting the people in jeopardy, their lives in jeopardy. Because the people who believe that and believe the people who say it are a part of what the people say, you know, they talk about, you know, the people coming and taking their jobs and making it hard for the government and the government is, is saying, no, that's not true. But, you know, it, all of these things happening. And my brothers and sisters, Again, let me remind you. The people in Deuteronomy chapter 28 were our ancestors. And because they turned away from Yahuwah, all of these things, my brothers and sisters, 
all of these things that we're hearing now and we're seeing with our eyes, all of these things are going to be said of us. We're going to suffer a lot of these things, even though they're not true. They're going to brand us, you know. So when we look at Psalm 44 and verse 12, we see here how the people were sold. That is a thou sellest thy people for nothing, for naught, and does not increase thy wealth by their price. So, anyway, the people who sold us into 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 slavery. Here they're accusing Yahuwah for selling them. But they sold themselves. Because had they listened to what Yahuwah said in his word, they would not be in that predicament. And uh -uh, so, so here, the people here, it says that people, the word people, sometimes it is referring to uh, when you refer to the, the some you know, is used vice versa the word people because in in some aspect the word people is goi goi which is talking about heathen or the gentiles here is not talking about goi it's talking about the arm 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 ayin and mem the two Hebrew consonants that make up the word arm, um, arm. Um. It's like you're saying A M M, um, okay? But it's arm, um, okay? And and these are the people, arm, um, the folks, okay? People. They they are they are men, they are nation, people. Come from arm, um, um. a people, uh, you know, as a congregated unit, specifically. A tribe as those of Israel, hence collectively troops or attendants. Figuratively, it's talking about a flock or the folk or men or nation or people. And what it's saying here is that they are sold for naught, for nothing. Uh, not, nothing, nothing either. Uh, there's a price right to be paid for something, right? But they they they're taking these people. In other words, they come and they get them for nothing. They have to pay nothing. They have to pay nothing to get them. And and um, you know, but the word here, uh, not, it is is the word horn horn. Okay, the original word horn is is, um, hey, vav and 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 unknown and um what he's saying is like wealth or sufficiency you know that's what the word is own means wealth or sufficiency it, it's enough or for nothing <laughs> riches they get people get rich off of off our backs people get rich off our ancestors backs and they were able to set up you know something for their family for the kids set up you know inheritance all for us all for our ancestors okay and he, he, here in america they, they've been trying for years to see if they can get some money back from the government for all of the the um evil that was done to our ancestors and, and really, every time you go up to congress or wherever they vote it down because they say no they don't want to do that but guess what they, they 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 pay the, the Japanese people. They pay the Chinese and them. They pay them. They, they give them something for what they suffered. You know. Then they put them and throw them in, in, in prison and all that kind of stuff. They get help. You know that they help the Chinese countries, the the, the Asian countries and people that need help, they get they help them. The people in Africa they don't get nothing. And we here we really get nothing. And if the people in Africa give up anything, they have to give up, I mean, get anything, they have to give up something, you know. So unless they're willing to give something up, they don't get nothing. But the word comes from the same 
hewn in the in the, in the sense of own and the wealth by implication enough are you know for nothing riches substance wealth you know uh, come from a primitive root properly to be not nothing nothing from nothing brings nothing <laughs> Uh, where there's a song that says, nothing from nothing, bring nothing. You know, um, figuratively, to be, uh, to act tightly. They're, they're not going to let anything go. Be ready. Praise his holy name that Yahuwah has, you know, broken um, the backs of those who ill-treated us to the point that we are free in him. Praise his holy name. We're going to stop here, brothers and sisters, and come back to the next session. And so we're going to ask it to be a blessing to someone and to walk with the king. Shalom.